All right, good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Lord of the Flies. I'm gonna go over some brief notes and then we're going to read chapter one together to talk about some of the important parts. So starting off, as you are reading, you always wanna make sure that you are taking notes as you go. Okay, um, you don't want to spend all of this time dedicated to reading the chapter and then not remember things later and have to reread the whole thing all over again. So it's going to be important that you highlight the text as we go. The text is a PDF, so you can open it and highlight it. You can make notes in the margins, you can comment on your PDF, or you can write down ideas in a notebook. Something so that you have the information and you don't get to the end of the book and forget what happened in the very beginning. Okay, so we're gonna model some of that today and you can look at some of the things that I highlighted and some of the notes that I've made. Okay, as we're reading Lord of the Flies, one thing that you're going to wanna do is pay attention to connotation. Remember, connotation is the emotional meaning of words. So there are a lot of mentions of things like sunshine, which is happy and fun, and then also shadows, which are dark and scary. There's a knife that gets flashed around, which is very intimidating and violent. There are butterflies, which are happy and jolly. Um, one of the characters likes to do handstands because he has fun and he thinks it's a great adventure. But other kids find the jungle to be really dark and scary. So we want to pay attention to the emotional meanings and the tones of the chapter as we go. Okay. Chapter one is the beginning of our story. It's the exposition. And so that's where we learn things like the characters, the setting, and the main conflict. So that's primarily what we're going to be looking for today. Okay. The characters we're going to be introduced to are Ralph, Piggy, Jack, Roger, and Simon. And remember, as we look at characterization, we want to focus on things like their actions, what they do, how they relate to other characters, their inner thoughts and dialogue, the description, that would be the direct characterization when the author just tells us what the character is like, and then also the dialogue, what they say and what other characters say to them. So on the lookout for things like that. Okay. We are also going to be introduced to our setting. We're going to learn that the boys are on an island, okay, and they have a nice lagoon. There's a castle type rock, there's a mountain, and they are surrounded by a giant reef. So we'll be paying attention to the setting and again thinking of the positive and negative connotations, which parts of the island are scary and which parts of the island are safe. Okay, the overall conflict, we're going to learn vaguely that there is a war going on in the outside world and that's why all of these schoolboys were being evacuated. Their plane is going to crash and they're going to be stranded on an island. So that's going to be their primary conflict is that they're stuck. And then we're going to see all of the conflicts between the characters and some of their internal conflicts as well. Important symbols, we're going to be introduced to the conch to the glasses and to the hunting knife. We're going to see those come up a lot in chapter one. And as the book progresses, we're gonna learn more about what each of those objects represents. Okay. And then again, as you are reading, you don't wanna forget everything. So take notes in the margins or on paper. If you're reading my highlighted chapter one, think about why I highlighted those sections and how it connects to these slideshows. And specifically, we're looking for information on characters, connotation, setting and connotation, conflict, symbols, questions that you may have, and also predictions. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get started in our story. Chapter one is The Sound of the Shell. Boy with fair hair lowered himself down the last few feet of rock and began to pick his way toward the lagoon. Though he had taken off his school sweater and trailed it now from one hand, his gray shirt stuck to him and his hair was plastered to his forehead. All around him, the long scar smashed into the jungle was a bath of heat. He was clambering heavily among the creepers and broken trunks when a bird, a vision of red and yellow, flashed upwards with a witch-like cry. And this cry was echoed by another. Hi, it said, wait a minute. The undergrowth at the side of the scar was shaken and a multitude of raindrops fell pattering. Wait a minute, the voice said, I got caught up. 
the fair boy stopped and jerked his stockings with an automatic gesture. The jungle made, that made the jungle seem for a moment like the home counties. And here we have a simile comparing the jungle to the home counties, which is suburban areas outside of London, England. So we know that the boys are from the home counties. As I am reading chapter one, um, I do have these comments in the side. They're not in your version, so you'll be able to see them. I'm not always going to stop and talk about them, but I will make sure that the comment comes up so you can see it as you are reading along with me. The voice spoke again. I can hardly move with all these creeper things. The owner of the voice came backing out of the undergrowth so that twigs scratched on a greasy windbreaker. The naked crooks of his knees were plump, caught and scratched by thorns. He bent down and removed the thorns carefully and turned around. He was shorter than the fair boy and very fat. He came forward, searching out safe lodgments for his feet, and then looked up through thick spectacles. Where's the man with the megaphone? The fair boy shook his head. This is an island. At least I think it's an island. That's a reef out in the sea. Perhaps there aren't any grown-ups anywhere. Fat boy looked startled. There was that pilot, but wasn't he in the passenger cabin? He was up in front. The fair boy was peering at the reef through screwed up eyes. All of them other kids. The fat boy went on. Some of them must have got out. They must have, mustn't they? The fair boy began to pick his way as casually as possible toward the water. He tried to be offhand and not too obviously uninterested, but the fat boy hurried after him. Aren't there any grown-ups at all? I don't think so. The fair boy said this solemnly, but then the delight of a realized ambition overcame him. In the middle of the scar, he stood on his head and grinned at the reversed fat boy. No grown-ups, the fat boy thought for a moment. That pilot. The fair boy allowed his feet to come down and sat on the steamy earth. He must have flown off after he dropped us. He couldn't land here, not in the place with wheels. We was attacked. He'll be back all right. The fat boy shook his head. When we was coming down, I looked through one of them windows. I saw the other part of the plane. There were flames coming out of it. He looked up and down the scar. And this is what the cabin done. The fair boy reached out and touched the jagged end of a trunk. For a moment, he looked interested. What happened to it? He asked. Where's it got to now? The storm dragged it out to sea. It wasn't half dangerous with all them tree trunks falling. There must have been some kids still in it. He hesitated for a moment, then spoke again. What's your name? Ralph. The fat boy waited to be asked his name in turn, but this proffer of acquaintance was not made. The fair boy called Ralph, smiled vaguely, stood up, and began to make his way once more toward the lagoon. The fat boy hung steadily at his shoulder. I expect there's a lot more of us scattered about. You haven't seen any others, have you? Ralph took his, shook his head and increased his speed. Then he tripped over a branch and came down with a crash. The fat boy stood by him, breathing hard. My auntie told me not to run, he explained, on account of my asthma. Asthma? That's right, can't catch my breath. I was the only boy in our school what had asthma, said the fat boy with a touch of pride, and I've been wearing specs since I was three. Okay, so we're getting a lot of characterization about this fat boy so far. So far we know he's chubby, he has glasses, he has asthma, he likes to follow the rules, he really is looking for adults. The other kid, the fair boy Ralph, doesn't want to hang out with him. Okay. He took off his glasses and held them out to Ralph, blinking and smiling, and then started to wipe them against his grubby windbreaker. An expression of pain and inward concentration altered the pale contours of his face. He smeared the sweat from his cheeks and quickly adjusted the spectacles on his nose. Them fruit, he glanced around the scar. Them fruit, he said, I expect. He put his glasses on and waded away from Ralph and crouched down among the tangled foliage. I'll be out again in just a minute. Ralph disentangled himself cautiously and stole away through the branches. In a few seconds, the fat boy's grunts were behind him, and he was hurrying toward the screen that still lay between him and the lagoon. He climbed over a broken trunk and was out of the jungle. The shore was fledged with palm trees. These stood or leaned and reclined in light against their green feathers and were up a hundred feet up in the air. The ground beneath them was a bank covered with coarse grass, 
torn up everywhere by the upheavals of fallen trees, scattered with decaying coconuts and palm saplings. Behind them was the darkness of the forest proper and the open space of the scar. Ralph stood, one hand out against the gray trunk and screwed up his eyes against the shimmering water. Out there, perhaps a mile away, the white surf flinked on a coral reef, and beyond that, the open sea was dark blue. Within the irregular arc of coral, the lagoon was as still as a mountain lake, blue of all shades and shadowy green and purple. The beach between the palm terrace and the water was a thin stick, endless apparently, for Ralph's to Ralph's left, the perspectives of palm and beach and water drew to a point at infinity and always, almost visible, was the heat. He jumped down from the terrace. The sand was thick over his black shoes and the heat hit him. He became conscious of the weight of clothes, kicked off his, his shoes off fiercely and ripped off each stocking with its elastic garter in a single moment movement. Then he leapt up on the terrace, pulled off his shirt, and stood there among the skull-like coconuts with green shadows from the palms and the forest sliding over his skin. He undid the snake clasp of his belt, lugged off his shorts and pants, and stood there naked, looking at the dazzling beach and the water. He was old enough, 12 years and a few months, to have lost the prominent tummy of childhood, and yet not old enough for adolescence to have made him awkward. You could see how he might make a boxer as far as width and heaviness of shoulders went, but there was a mildness about his mouth and eyes that proclaimed no devil. He patted the palm trunk softly and forced at last to believe in the reality of the island, laughed delightedly again and stood on his head. He turned neatly to his feet, jumped down to the beach, knelt and swept up a double armful of sand to pile against his chest. Then he sat back and looked at the water with bright, excited eyes. So here we have um, more indirect characterization about Ralph. Okay? We can see that he is um, a pretty handsome boy. He's often described as fair, which means like blonde and light, and he's often in the sunlight. And he's always laughing and trying to have fun. And we can see here that he's proclaimed no devil. So when we start thinking about who the protagonist and antagonist is and the ideas of good and evil, we can see all of these connotations are that Ralph is a really good guy, except that he doesn't really like Piggy. Okay. Ralph, the fat boy lowered himself over the terrace and sat down carefully using the edge as a seat. I'm sorry I've been such a time, them fruit. He wiped his glasses and adjusted them on his button nose. The frame had made a deep pink V on the bridge. He looked critically at Ralph's golden body and then down at his own clothes. He laid a hand at the end of the zipper that extended down his chest. <laughs>